All right, Zach. So, what did your group say causes rotational motion? External force acting on an object on an axis. Okay, Ex an external force. Good, I like that word external, very specific. External force acting on an object. Okay, and then what was the rest? Um, on, an, uh, or on an axis. On an axis. So, where would the axis be for the wheel? In the center? The center. So I'm going to apply the force here to get it to rotate. No, you have to rotate on the outside. I have to rotate it on the outside. Okay. So I have to apply a force. What did you say? Torque. Torque. Okay. So I have to apply a force at, a cert at some distance from the axis of rotation. What happens if I apply the force exactly at the axis of rotation? Nothing, nothing happens, right? So you have to be at least some distance away from the axis of rotation. And last time we learned that if I apply the same force at different radii, I get different torques. We talked about how when we go to open the door, where do we open the door? Close to the hinges or far away from the hinges? Far away from the hinges, right? Because you get more torque for the same amount of force. Did anybody else, did any other group put something different? for that question. No? Okay. So I would say torque is 99% right. There's one other clarifying word that would make it 100% correct. And I might use I might use this chair as an example. What will cause this chair to accelerate? A force I'm applying a force. It's not accelerating. A large force compared to the object's weight, which corresponds to the amount of friction, right? So I have to push with a greater force than the friction is applying to the chair. So what do we call that when there's a difference in forces? It's just one little clarifying word. Net force, okay? So just like it takes a net force to cause acceleration, what does it take to, to cause rotational acceleration? A net torque, okay? So that is the answer to the first question is net torque. So it is a force at some distance, r, away from the axis of rotation, but not just a torque, a net torque. So let me further explain why that is necessary. So here I have the meter stick, two masses. They're pretty much the same clamp. So I would say the same amount of mass on each side. And if I were to find the center of mass, then they would balance. But what if I put my axis of rotation over here? We're going to get rotational motion, right? This is applying the same force as this. Why does it want to rotate this way? because of the radius and there's more torque, right? Can I cause it to be at static equilibrium? Does anybody remember what that word static? Static. Not moving, it's at rest. So is there a way that I can cause this to be at rest, not to rotate? What do I have to do? I have to apply an additional torque, either upwards here or downwards here. So what I'm clarifying for you is that I'm applying torque in this situation. I'm preventing this from rotating about this axis. But it is a net torque that causes the acceleration. I know it sounds like a small word, but that net is a big deal. It's a big difference, OK? Just any torque will not cause rotation. All right, Zach, you get to pick the next table to answer the next question. Harrison's table. All right, Harrison. Uh, what did your table say about rotational displacement? What is it? How can we describe it? You said it was a change from one angle to another or the change in the arc length. Change in one angle from the other, change in the arc length. Perfect. So whenever this wheel rotates, if I look at just this point, it's going to move from here to here. That would be 90 degrees of angular displacement. In fact, anywhere along this radius, right, 
it would all move through 90 degrees. All right, I said it's the total angle through which an object sweeps through. You can think of it like a, a windshield wiper. Every point on that radius is going to sweep through the same angle. All right, Harrison, you get to pick the next table. Lane. Lane. Lane wasn't here last time, so hopefully uh, we're catching up here. What can it be measured in? What did your table say? Or pick somebody at your table to share with us. Radians. Radians, okay. So the angular displacement can be measured in radians. Did you guys come up with any other answer? Radians is the, the unit we'll use to measure radi uh, angular displacement. Degrees. Degrees, we could also use degrees. Perfect, and there is one more that might not be so obvious. I know we can convert degrees to radians and radians to degrees. Revolutions, perfect, perfect. So you can actually measure angular displacement in revolutions, how many times it went around. So if a problem talks about revolutions per minute, they're telling you the angular speed. Or if it says that it makes 20 revolutions, they're telling you the angular displacement, okay? I need to be able to convert between all three of these. So let's say one revolution. How many radians is in one revolution? Two pi radians in one revolution. How many degrees in one revolution? 360, good. And of course, the last one is one revolution. Just for clarification, the unit we'll be using in here on my AP test, on the College Board AP test, what we're going to be using is radians. All the others are real world life examples we can use to measure them, but just like we use meters instead of miles or feet, we're going to use radians. And what does radians measure? Rotational displacement, angular displacement. What is the variable that represents this angle? Theta. theta. So what are we going to measure theta in? We're going to measure theta in radians. Okay? Awesome. Any questions about that? Y'all are so quiet today. All right, we're going to do an outside demonstration. We're going to go outside to the soccer fields, and we're going to create a class line. So you are going to become a solid object, OK? I need two volunteers, one of you to be the videographer. So you need a camera, a cell phone with a camera on it. You need to be able to upload it to some source or should be able to share it with me. And I need a director. So the videographer, who's that going to be? OK, and you can pick who the producer is to go out there with you. OK, so. <laughs> All right, so I need everybody to get up. We're going to go down to the soccer fields. You guys are going to go to the balcony uh, off the teacher's lounge. 25, 26, 27. Perfect. We have an odd number. 27 minus 1 is 26. What's half of 26? 13. 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. You are the lucky winner, Shelby Robinson. <laughs> yes? Okay. I am the external source of torque. I can at any moment apply more torque or less torque. I can change the direction of the torque which I apply. All right, ready? Y'all figure it out. Okay, here we go. External torque being applied this way. Let's go. This is looking good? Okay, here I come. More external torque this way. This way. All right, we got a good cut. Keep going, keep going, keep going. All right, here it comes. Ready? External torque this way. How do they look? Did y'all get it? Do you have it? Okay. <laughs> All right, that looked really good to me, especially for the number of people we have out here. Let's go see what the video looked like. All right. <clears throat> Why the world did we just do that? <laughs> uh, because <laughs> to wake you up, yes, always. Um, 
but also a lot of you have expressed to me at some point in the year and previous students have expressed to me that we we are kinest kinesthetic learners hands-on stuff right we like to see it feel it um, experience it we definitely experienced rotational motion those of you that were on the outsides <laughs> you had the hardest job today I actually had the hardest job out of any of my classes because you are the largest class that I have and of course the longer the radius the faster those people are having to go out there uh, so this is just a little diagram that represents what you just were out there maybe you weren't a solid straight line at all times maybe you were a little bit more fluid uh, but I want to put some names <laughs> to this. I know Shelby was our axis of rotation, and I believe I saw Aiden on, would you say it was this end, Aiden? Did you start out on? Yes. Yes, okay, we'll say Aiden's here. And then Joey? Joey was Aiden. Okay, so from your perspective, uh, Joey was here, and Aiden was here, and now let's just guesstimate who was B and who was D. Who thinks they were kind of in the middle between Shelby and Joey? Who? When she counters like one, two, three, four, five, six, who's like seven? Who's like seven when she counters? Talia. Talia was here? Talia was here. Okay, Talia. All right, and who about? Catherine. Catherine? Okay. All right, real quickly, uh, Joey, where's Joey? I want you to describe to us your experience. What did you experience out there? <laughs> uh, okay, so I started running backwards fast, and then when you switched directions, I slipped in the mud. Oh, no. <laughs> Accents. You had to change directions very quickly? Yes. Okay, where's Catherine? Right here. Catherine. Did you have to change directions? Did you feel, feel like you had to change directions very quickly? Not really. Not really. OK. Who was right next to Shelby? Zach and John? Did you feel like you had to change directions very quickly when the whole line? No. no. Not really at all. So where you were on this line really changed your linear motion your linear motion. So what I want you to do right now with your tables and on your whiteboards as a group, again, I want you to answer these questions. Rank the magnitudes, so not direction, direction doesn't matter, rank the magnitudes for the rotational motion of the points above for angular velocity and linear velocity. Use the points A, B, C, D, and E. Rank their angular velocity, rank their linear velocity. So talk about it as a table, come up with a final answer together as a group, put it on your whiteboard. All right, let's see if we all got the same thing. Y'all help me check. Are there any differences between answers? They have a C on theirs. They have a C on theirs, good. Does everybody else have a C? Okay, Zach. <laughs> okay, can you explain to us why you didn't put a C? Because So I like that you guys put different answers on this because it really depends on the object. It depends on the situation. In this situation, who was center? Shelby? Would you say, did you just stand straight or did your front side change perspective? It changed perspective. So even if like you consider her shoulders to be at some radius from the center, her, her center is not moving linearly, but if you think of it as a front and back, that front and back is changing perspective, right? But if you think about like the door and the hinges on the door or the axis on the door, that, that isn't moving. Okay, so it just depends on the object whether that C is moving or not. In this case, I would say C was rotating and it was rotating at the same velocity or angular velocity as the other. Good, so we all said that the angular velocities were equal for each point and the reason being why? Who wants to explain? They all rotate. They all rotate. They all? <laughs> they make the same revolutions per minute. Good, Joey? Though, like, the velocity, that's 
higher and it's like the angle is the same always? Exactly. The angle that they move through is the same. Everybody traveled 90 degrees in the same amount of time. Perfect. And then what did we say about these points down here? A equals E is greater than B equals D is greater than C. And you all have the same answer there, right? Perfect. All right, take a seat. Uh, do we have the video? All right, here we go. This is y'all. Yeah, this is y'all. And this is, here, let me erase this really quick. <laughs> We're very fluid in here, right? Okay. All right, Tessa, can you turn the light off? I love hearing the commentary. Guys, you have to start going faster. <laughs> Not too bad. <laughs> this is where Lane's hopping. <laughs> Okay, even though it wasn't perfectly straight and you were a little fluid, I still, I still love it because it also helps us describe another phenomenon that we, I don't remember if we talked about this last class or not, rotational inertia? Okay, the resistance to rotate. Which one of these is easier to rotate? This one, why? Because we look, it has the same mass here and the same mass here. Why is this so much harder to rotate? Joey? The radius increases the proportion. Awesome. So we have an increased radius. So there's an increased torque. And those of you that were on the ends, was it hard for you to change your direction out here? Yes, because you had more velocity, therefore you had more linear momentum. And it was harder for you to change that direction because you were going faster, right? And that's exactly why it's harder to rotate the meter stick with the clamps that are on the ends versus the inside because it's having to change its direction more quickly when it's on the ends. So perfect. All right. Now you guys did have a little bit of a disadvantage because you were a large class. Here's my smallest class. <laughs> this is second period. Too bad, huh? <laughs> that was my favorite part. <laughs> All right, so they did a pretty decent job, uh, but they had a lot less, uh, they had less students, right? So they had less total length. And so the people in the ends weren't having to go nearly as fast as what uh, Joey and Aiden were. Oh, wait. And they had a lot more wind. <laughs> okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about is the radian. You saw that the person on the outside had to create a much bigger circumference, right? They traveled a much larger distance than the people on the inside. Their circles were, were much smaller that they traced out. Those of you that are in pre-cal right now, you're probably learning about the radian, using the radian. Your, your calculator needs to be in radians in order to do your calculations. But what is the radian? I went through high school and college not really conceptually understanding what the radian was. It was just a word in my vocabulary. And I, I have found that for most of my students, 
that it is also just a word in their vocabulary, but to have a concrete, aha, I can explain it at a moment's notice, I know exactly what a radian is, that is, it's hard to come by. Because you've got so many, right, you've got so many terms coming at you that you just know that it has something to do with a circle. This is, whoops, this is a link to Wikipedia. Now I know most of you don't do your research on Wikipedia, understandably, but they actually have a really good animation, uh, or GIF I guess you could call it, of what a radian is. So I want you to watch this and come up with your definition of what a radian is. All right, I saw some smiles, some ahas going on whenever you saw that, and that's exactly what happened to me uh, whenever I saw that animation on Twitter. It was just a, a little uh, GIF that somebody had posted, and I, I liked it. I saved it because I was like, this is perfect, and whenever we go over the radian this year, I'm going to put that, uh, I'm going to show my class that, because without me even telling you what a radian is, that very clearly shows you what a radian is. But now can you put that into words? <laughs> what is a radian? Now remember what we said at the beginning of class, because this is the confusion with a radian. What does a radian measure? What variable does a radian measure? Theta. And what is theta representing? An angle. So a radian is a unit of measurement for an angle. Just like degrees is a unit of measurement of an angle. But what is one radian? What is two radians? What is the angle that is a half a radian? What is the angle that is pi radians or two pi radians? So with your table, I want you to come up with a written definition, your own definition of what a radian is. Okay, go. Eyes and ears up here, please. Let's talk about this for a second because this is where the exact definition comes into, uh, comes into play. And I'm hearing good discussion. I'm, I'm seeing the realization that this is the radius. And then if I lay that radius on the outside of my circumference, when this radius is equal to my, what do we call this length? Arc length. When the radius is equal to my arc length, what is one radian? The theta. The theta is equal to one radian. Remember we said that at the beginning of class? What does radians measure? The theta, which is the angle, right? So whenever we have a radius of 10 centimeters and we have an arc length of 10 centimeters, then what is my angle equal to? My angle is equal to one radian. Radian is not a variable, it's a unit of measurement. I could ask you, whenever my radius equals my arc length, how many degrees? How many degrees is that theta equal to? Right? And you could kind of eyeball it and estimate it. But you have a more concrete understanding of what degrees represents. What I'm saying is that this angle, theta, is one what? One radian, okay? Does my arc length always have to equal my radius? What if I did that? Did my radius change? Did my arc length change? Yes, what else changed? My angle, my theta changed. So now, is theta equal to one radian? No, it's equal to a little more than a radian, right? And in terms of pi, how many radians is it? Oh, pi halves radians. Radians is a unit of measurement, okay? So this leads us into, well, here's our definition. One radian, specifically one radian, is the angle made when the radius equals the arc length. That is what one radian is. It is this grayed area right there. Okay, where's Brant? Brant came up and asked me a question and he had a very insightful uh, observation. You were saying that 
if I doubled the radius, what does the arc length do? What did you say? Double. It doubles. If I double the radius, then what does the arc length do? It doubles. Brant, did we change the angle in that scenario? No. So what is your angle still? It is still one radian. But this is like, who is in the middle, Talia? No, 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 not the middle, middle, the, the, the right middle. And then uh, Aiden was out here? Yes. OK. This is why Talia and Aiden had the same angular velocity. Because they swept through the same angle, right? In the same amount of time. But because the R value was double for Aiden, he had to travel twice the arc length, OK? And that's why his linear velocity was greater than Talia's, OK? Is it sinking in what a radian is? It's just a unit of measurement for an angle. That's it. Now, a common question that I get is, in math class, my calculator has to be in radians. But all year, you've told us to put our calculator in degrees. Now that we're talking about and dealing with radians, does it need to be in radians as well? So here's my question for you. Let's say that Talia traveled 1 pi radians. How far did she travel? Or how much of a circle did she sweep through? Half a circle, right? And then I made her stop, or I made the line stop. And then I said, start again. And then she traveled through. 2 pi radians. She traveled a full circle. So now how many times has she gone around? One and a half. Good. How many total radians did she travel? Love it, Joey. How many total radians did she travel in that description in terms of pi? Three pi radians. So she traveled three pi radians, which we can visually see is equal to how many revolutions? 1.5 revolutions, that's what you're going to discover in this lab today. So in your lab, you've got this data table. You've got this graph. So you're going to take the data. You're going to draw the graph. You're going to run a linear regression using your calculators. We're going to have different groups. Each group's going to have a different angle in their experiment, and each group's going to report what their linear regression was after you've collected the data. If you need a refresher on how to calculate the linear regression using the calculator, please let me know. I'd be happy to tell you. And we're going to work in groups of threes today. You get to pick your groups. You get to pick groups of three. And I want one person to come write their name up here to claim one of these groups. That's going to indicate what your angle of measurement will be for this lab. Everything you need for this lab is on the center table on the left-hand side, table two. Okay, Your string, your rulers, your little graph paper, it's all back there. Okay, If you have questions, let me know. Get busy. Somebody to work with? Okay. So, do we draw the arc? Oh, there? Yes. Yeah. Add it on the top of the screen. Are you going to do that? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Let me know if y'all have any questions. Okay. Yeah. How are we doing here? Really good. Can we just start? How big of a radius would you suggest? That is totally up to you. This is the radius of five centimeters. What's the angle that you have to make? Forty-five degrees. Forty-five degrees. Oh, well, we just have to make one angle. We don't have to make a little circle. Correct. Oh, okay. That's neat. So then we can just like focus on the first quadrant and make it from there. 
Okay. Yes. Sydney, you're good at art. Would you like to uh, do the honors? I cannot draw straight. This blindness messes with my depth perception. I don't have any depth perception. 